You're watching the United Athletic Conference on ESPN. Hey, let's have a little fun on a Saturday night. It's prime time in Abilene, Texas, and a terrific matchup in the FCS. It's ninth ranked Incarnate Word up against Abilene Christian. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. Zach Carlisle with Joseph Chapa, Coy Oslin down on the sideline as well. This is a terrific game on this Saturday night. UIW, a perennial power. ACU off to a 2-0 start. Zach, this is a game that I have had circled on my calendar for a long time. UIW has a chance to build it on its historic success. And ACU, since 2013, has a chance to start the season 3-0. Yeah, this is going to be some kind of matchup. Let's start with these Cardinals. I mean, over the last five years or so, this has been one of the great teams in the country. They're coming off of a Final Four berth a year ago. New coaching staff, new quarterback. They're off to a one and one start, but this team is as loaded as ever. I see energy, high flying, high scoring, and I think that's what we're going to see here at Wildcat Stadium on the offensive side of the ball. On the other side, things have been turning around for the positive for Abilene Christian, but this is their biggest test of the season. And Zach, this is where the 19 years of FBS experience comes in for Keith Patterson. I think now you're going to have to rely on your defense to get the job done against offense. So a really nice offense-defensive battle here tonight for Saturday Night Primetime. Well, this is going to be a fun one. And ECU has a chance to pull off an upset of a top 10 team. More on that, we say hello to Coy Osler. Zach, this is going to be a great game. ACU almost made the playoffs last year. UIW coming off back-to-back -back FCS playoff appearances. Now, neither of those were under current head coach Clint Colleau. First one, Eric Morris, former head coach. He took them to the playoffs two years ago. He headed to Oregon for the offensive coordinator's job. He's at North Texas, where he's the head coach now. Now, their former head coach, G.J. Kinney, is at Texas State, and Clint Colo at his alma mater, trying to continue the fight. Coy, thank you very much, and we're glad you're with us on this Saturday night. Away we go. UIW won the toss, deferred to the second half. So we get to see the ACU offense and Maverick McIver. And uh, these Wildcats are off to a 2-0 start. McIver was great last week against Prairie View a and Zach, what a year he's already having, being the most efficient quarterback in the league, in the conference. And we'll see what he does here tonight against a tough UIW defense. And so the Wildcats will start it from the 25. And McIver, a quick throw. It's Tristan go lightly for a gain of seven. And so McIver, the quarterback out of San Angelo, Texas, his second year with the Wildcats and uh, ACU in a rout last week, putting up 45 points in the win at Prairie View and long touchdown passes of 24, 75 at 40 and 46 last week. Here is McIver. He's going to put it up on the first two plays and it's Jed Castles the tight end for the catch and the first down and he's knocked out of bounds as ACU gets enough for the first. What are you expecting from McIver tonight? I think McIver's going to run into situations where he's going to have to make the shot. He's going to have to make the big game throws, whereas before the first two games, it's been very efficient. This is a very quarterback-friendly system, just like the Cardinals, but I think now McIver's going to have to put on a show here tonight, and we're a better place to do it than here at home in Abilene. His offensive line has been terrific so far. No sacks, and he's yet to turn the ball over. Here is a running game for Abilene Chris and Jeremiah Dobbins, and this is going to be a different backfield tonight. They got a couple of names, no Rovon Banks, no Xavier Wishart out there, so we expect a lot of 21. I love that you brought up the offensive line already because not only is it important for Maverick McIver, but it's important for the entire backfield right behind McIver, and so a really balanced offense from uh, Coach Ryan Pugh for the Wildcats. Second and three, ACU's opening drive of the game. And it's Dobbins, his second straight carry, and he's got a nice gain 
inside UIW territory for another first. And this ACU offense, we talked about Dobbins and a terrific group of receivers and an offensive line that's all back after starting last season as well. No sacks allowed already this season. ACU believes that they have not only the best offensive line in the conference, but in the entire FCS. And I think you're seeing that already with Dobbins just plunging it up the middle and McIver having good pass protection. Under center and Dobbins third straight carry. He's met immediately at the line of scrimmage. Marcus Brown, the big defensive end, is the first one in there. And this UIW defense that really improved from week one to week two, UTEP and then the game against Northern Colorado, they're coming off of a good showing. And it comes back to the defensive fundamentals, winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, and I think already this Cardinals defensive front is already showing that here in the first drive of the game. It's a terrific, couple of really terrific names on that defensive side. Steven Parker at the defensive line, as well, Brandon Richard, the veteran, a linebacker. That ball's up in the air, it's up for grabs, and I think it's caught. Abilene Christian's going to come up with it. A heads up play by Dobbins. It is going to turn into a gain of a couple. That could have been disastrous for ACU. Already a little adventurous here out here at Wildcat Stadium. I don't think you draw that up. I've never seen that play in a play sheet or anything <laughs> like that. But if you're a coach on the Wildcat sideline, hey, if it works out, it works out. Um, but now you're setting up McIver for another, another drive here. A throw to Jed Castles that got deflected, popped up, and Dobbins was able to hang on to it. So third and eight, the game's first third down. Abilene Christian, 52% on this down through two games this season. Just a three-man rush. McIver deep to the sideline, going up and getting it. And that's a terrific high point catch for Tylen Williams, and Abilene Christian's got a first down. And now these are the throws McIver starting off with rhythm throws already and now making a tough throw right there. Nice little corner route, a little 10 and out from McIver. Williams, the senior out of Euless, who hadn't seen a lot of footballs thrown his way over the last couple of years. But that's uh, his third catch of this season already. He's averaging 22 yards a catch this year. First and 10 on this good opening drive for Abilene Christian and Dobbins trying to find a little bit of room and just gets laid on top of by big Darren Brown. Number 21 on the carry. Defensive tackle for UIW. So we take a look at our keys to the game. Joseph. Well, well, we start with the defense, and that's winning up front, and that's the battle of the line of scrimmage. Complimentary football, I think you can say that again, as well as the Wildcats. And then the Wildcats go on defense. It's about keeping the lid on Calzada, keep him in the pocket. You don't want to make him really mobile. Defensive fundamentals last game against Prairie View A&M. They had some miscues on the secondary, but I think now uh, with Coach Skyler Cassidy cleaning up, they'll have a good game. Excited about that side of the ball when it flips over. But Abilene Christian, meanwhile, on the ground with Jeremiah Dobbins. And he takes it over that left side of the Peter offensive Perry, line, which is so Jeremiah good Dobbins. behind Reese Moore and Allen Hatton. And it's another first. And they're all returners. So the ke chemistry is already there. You come into spring ball, you come into fall camp, and there's no new faces at all in the uh, on the trenches for the offensive line. And so you're starting to see the leadership and chemistry that this group has. All the way to the 23 already. The drive that's eating up already almost six minutes. Back to the ground, and with a depleted running back group, it's JV on Sunday. We expect to see a ton of number zero tonight as well. It's gonna be a lot of Dobbins and Sunday. They're gonna need them in the backfield tonight. And ACU really prides themselves on depth, but also depth at the running back position. And they have a lot of guys that they can rotate in, whether it's third down, you need a guy just run up the middle, you need a guy go west and east. And it's really tiring down this Cardinals defense so far in the first drive of this ball game. The All-American at Sac State, Ayadeli Adeowe. Defensive end making the tackle, second down. And seven as ACU's in the red zone on the slant. It is caught near a first. Is it enough? It is. Tristan go lightly, move the chains to the 11-yard line. 
Well, McIver reads man coverage here after the successful running game the ACU has, and it's just a simple, you know, five and in, a little nice little slant route from Trish and Go Lightly. We're seeing the improvement from McIver when it comes to decision making, staying poised, being more comfortable in this Keith Patterson Ryan Pugh offense, and we're seeing the fruits of that labor here already. John Mathis and Josh Gonzalez come in on the defensive line for UIW. ACU first and 10 at the 11. Sunday, the running back. He'll get the carry. And there is not a lot of room there. The first one there was a day away. Cleaned up in the backfield. And Ricky Rich, the linebacker, in there as well. And now we're seeing the physicality that the Cardinals are trying to match the Wildcats with. The Wildcats, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to note because the Cardinals, they like to play fast on offense. Now ACU is combating that, playing a little slow, ground and pound, and making the defense tired. And it's working well from them. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. Brandon Richard, the linebacker, also helping clean that up. No gain, second and 10. McIver with pressure coming. A fade to the end zone is incomplete for Tristan Go lightly. And third and 10 on the way on this opening drive. That has eaten up more than half the first quarter. And I think now this is going to be a game for Maverick McIver recognizing, okay, how am I going to react to these blitzing schemes from UIW? And I think you saw it there, recognizing it's a man blitz, but you got to get out of your three-step uh, three drop and throw the ball quickly. I think now he's going to start getting a little more comfortable after recognizing that. Big early third down. ACU can get a first down at the one. Cooper McCaslin in motion. Three-man rush. McIver's got time. Off to McCaslin in the flats. Got to make a move, and he can't do it. And the tackle made by Richard. And UIW with an early stand. And it looks like Abilene Christian's going to send on the field goal team. Well, UIW recognizes that the Wildcats have done a fantastic job just moving the chains, chugging all along, and just forcing the kicking unit from the Wildcats. UIW, now their defense can get a breather, but they match the physicality in the battle of the trenches with that dominant ACU offensive line. So the reigning UAC Special Teams Player of the Week, Kyle Ramsey, the field goal kicker for Abilene Christian will come on for a 24-yard attempt. It is a good snap and a hold, but we have a flag down. The kick was good, and we'll hear from John Kellermeyer, our referee, tonight for the first time. The kick appeared to be good, but we've got a um, first marker of the game. You have that opening drive that just took up so much of this first quarter. Offside, number zero, defense. Penalties half the distance to the goal. Still fourth down. So if Abilene Christian accepts it, If they accept the penalty, they may go for it. So it was a five yard penalty. They're gonna take the three points off the board and bring the offense back out and go for it on fourth and a long one. Take advantage of the opportunities what the defense gives you and ACU, Coach Keith Patterson, not afraid to take advantage of the opportunities. Let's see if they can uh, capitalize on it. So they're not gonna take the three. Instead, they'll go for it. It is fourth and a couple. McIver's going to throw, and it is incomplete. Looking to the end zone. And he was looking for Waydale Jones, who had a huge game last week, and instead, it is a turnover on downs. Well, on these type of plays, you want to recognize the one-on-one -on -one coverage out to the pylon, and McIver did a great job at that, but ACU just couldn't convert, and now they got some good yardage defensively, and we'll see how they uh, start on that end. A long, long opening drive ends with no points for ACU. UIW up next.
So after a drive that took nine minutes and two seconds, Abilene Christian comes up empty on the opening possession. So we get to see the UIW offense for the first time, this high-flying Cardinal team that put up over 600 yards of offense last week in their win over Northern Colorado. On the ground, they start with no gain for Trey Siggers and the ground game. So we go back to the fourth down decision for ACU. Well, for ACU, again, taking advantage of the opportunity that the defense gave them, you want to stay aggressive. And also, you look at the flip side. You have UIW starting inside the five. So now you're staying aggressive both sides of the ball, offense and defense. And we're seeing how Coach Patterson kind of thinks, especially here in the first quarter. It was fourth and six. The field goal was good. Offside on UIW, ACU takes the penalty and then does not convert the fourth down. On that slant, the quick route and a catch made by Jalen Campbell for the first completion for that man, Zach Calzada, the Texas A&M and Auburn transfer. I think Coach Killo said it best coming on to campus here in January. It's all about humility coming in and knowing that he's a very talented quarterback, got along well with the new and returning guys in camp, and we're starting to see that already, the comfortability and the decisions he's making this season. First third down for the Cardinals. 41% of the young season on this down. Abilene Christian giving up 38%. They go to the air. It's incomplete through the hands of Caleb Chapman. And a quick three and out for the Abilene Christian defense. Quick slant, Chapman couldn't get it. Plumley in coverage for ACU. And it kind of goes back to that fourth and one decision, Zach, because if you're Coach Patterson, you're playing, you know, three-dimensional chess. You recognize that you can start the offense inside the five and you know you have a great defense. And you'll see that right here, a fourth and one sending up a nice three and out for the Wildcats. And now you got the punting unit for the Cardinals. Ben Aquila, the first year punter, for the Cardinals, since one away, and it is a fair catch had by Dax Neese. And a 39 yard punt, ACU long drive, nothing. UIW quick drive, nothing. No score, late first. Two longtime rivals that were in their division two days in a Lone Star Conference together, in the Southland Conference together for almost 10 years, and now in different leagues playing for the first time since 2019. Drive number two for Abilene Christian. Maverick McIver, he's on the move and will get out of bounds right near the line of scrimmage. And we take a look at our impact players when Abilene Christian has the ball. Well, starting with ACU, it's going to come down to McIver maintaining that efficiency, maintaining that leadership and poise. And then who better than his blindside tackle and Reese Moore. On the opposite side for UIW, Stephen Parker, Ricky Rich, the Mike linebacker, just holding down and leading that defensive front. Yeah, to your point, Stephen Parker, the defensive end, the reigning Southland defensive player of the week. A terrific week last week at uh, Northern Colorado. No gain on the play. Tylen Foster shoots the gap and makes the tackle of Jeremiah Dobbins. And Abilene Christian with great field position to start this drive will face a third and nine. I think this is one of the best scenarios that ACU could have asked for heading into this game. And I think now, again, it's still 0-0 late in the first quarter, but I think this is a big third down, especially for McIver. See if he can make a tough throw like he did earlier to Tylen Williams. Let's see what he does here. Abilene Christian out gaining UIW 70 to nine so far. So 12 minutes in, McIver going to put it up, and it's too high. Looking for Blaine Taylor, who has been the top target so far this year for ACU. It's incomplete, and the Wildcats will have to punt. Well, it's three receivers stacked up on the right, and you know one of them, especially if they're lined up in the middle, is going inside, and you saw that there. Wide open, McIver just missed him a little bit, and those are some of the throws that McIver's going to have to talk to his quarterback's coach about and come back off next offensive drive and redeem himself from that. So ACU, for the first time, will punt it away. Grant Nickel. 
Texas Tech transfer from a year ago. Takes over punting duties this season. And back deep returnable for DeKalen Taylor. A little bit of room, but then he's met immediately at the 18-yard line. It's a 34-yard punt. UIW takes over. No score. No score in Wildcats Stadium in late in the first quarter here in Abilene, Texas. Drive number two for the UIW Cardinals, the ninth ranked team in all of FCS. And Zach Calzada will hand it off and come into the near side and taking a shot. Jarrell Whiteley, the redshirt junior running back. Makes you Texas, not much doing there. Well played up front by ECU. Well, if you're Connor McQueen, the offensive coordinator for Incarnate Word, now you can start a little bit of a normal drive. If you're an offensive coordinator, you don't anticipate yourself the first offensive drive in the game starting inside the five, and now he can go back to his normal play calling script, and we're seeing that here in the second drive. One of the reasons Zach Calzada chose UIW, a very quarterback-friendly offense. He's going to put it up for the third time. Off to the outside and caught. It looked like kind of getting back up and making the catch with C.J. Hardy. He stumbled a bit, but it's a first down as we take a look at the UIW offense. Sigger's a terrific back. Campbell, the top target so far, but they can really spread it out with these offensive weapons and an offensive line that's got Mark and Borjas back and then some new pieces with Castilla Robinson and Borjas. First first down of the game for the Cardinals and they'll put up another one to the outside and a catch but immediately tackled is Brandon Porter and this ACU secondary is going to be put to the test tonight against a really high-flying offense. And I think for ACU secondary, you want to wash away the mistakes that happened against Prairie View A&M. You lock in and you know you got to win the battle in the secondary against Calzada. And on the handoff is Wiley, the backup running back, who will take it for about six and third and four coming up. UIW and uh, Coach Clint Killo telling us the running game is everything to this Cardinal offense. Everybody just sees the fireworks and the big passing plays, but they need a good running game. And it's just fundamental football. Again, if you run that air raid type of system that they like to run, uh, you got to have a really good ground game, and Calzada is really, really thankful to have one. Calzada on third down. Just a four-man rush, but now time runs out. Going to have to make something happen. Looking down the sideline, what a throw, but it's batted away. Chapman the target, but Abilene Christian there defensively with Isaiah Kelly. And it's fourth down, and the Cardinals will punt. This goes exactly back to ACU's defensive keys to this game. It's making Calzada mobile. You don't want to keep him as a pocket passer because he is a good decision maker, especially in that quarterback-friendly offense. Move him outside the pocket, and you'll notice you'll have some of these more three and outs here. That was Anthony Egbo Jr. in coverage. And so fourth down for the Cardinals. And a punt coming again from... The Aquila, and and that was whew, loose and awkward for Dag's niece, but he's going to come up with it at the 28-yard line, a 38-yard punt, and nothing on the return. Final 35 seconds of this fairly quickly moving first quarter, and these are two really, really touted, highly touted quarterbacks in this game. And they do have that Power 5 experience prior to where they are here tonight. Like you said, Zach, really, really talented. Both can kind of go back into being pocket passers, but what I think separates the two is whether it's the decision-making for Calzada and also the dual threat ability for McIver. We're already seeing that early on here tonight. McIver, the starter a year ago for ACU, and he will hand it off to Jones coming to the wide side. We got a flag down. Markel Jones on the carry. Quick handoff. Holding number 75, offense. 10 yard penalty. Graffiti Germay, the right tackle. 
Call for the hold, 10 yards back it up for Abilene Christian. Under a half minute to go here in this first quarter. ACU took the opening drive in over nine minutes down the field, but went for it on a fourth and goal, on a fourth and one at, near the goal line and did not make it. And we sit scoreless. And this is drive three for Abilene Christian. McIver to the air, too high for Markel Jones. And this drive going nowhere quickly for the Wildcats. You want to go back to the rhythm throws for McIver. He's the type of quarterback that you got to start out short, medium, and then go to your shot plays, especially your backed up here at second and 20. Look for McIver to go back to his short reach and set up a closer third down. But we'll see what Coach Ryan Pugh, the offensive coordinator for ACU, has to draw up here to end the first. McIver I remember a guy who hadn't played a lot of football coming into last season, gotten hurt and didn't play at Texas Tech and makes a transfer to Abilene Christian and in year number two as the starter for the Wildcats. Quick throw to the outside, incomplete. Looking for Noah Caldwell and the hit put on by Trey Richardson, the veteran out of Houston. And a third and 20 on the way for ACU. And the ACU coaches have raved about McIver coming into this fall camp and coming into working with the new guys and the returners to where, hey, he's more of a leader now. He's more comfortable in this system. He's going back into his football days after those injuries, and he's playing really well. Now he's got to have a big game here tonight. wonder if this will be a conservative call on third and 20. Well, ACU's moving around like crazy in <laughs> a timeout called. That formation looked to be off from the beginning with eight seconds, seconds to go here in the first. Wonder if I expect just some sort of run and then punt it away. ACU got backed up with the penalty. Um, but UIW give them credit on that opening drive, nine minutes, and then they make the stop near the goal line to the defense hanging in for the Cardinals so far. Yeah, Zach, UIW does not get enough credit on the defensive end, forcing ACU to make these tough decisions. Do you want to be aggressive here with eight seconds left in the first third and 20, or you just want to do a little bit of a screen pass to Jeremiah Dobbins or a draw up the middle or something more conservative play calling like that and get the ball started in the second quarter. UIW's defense doing a really great job here tonight. Clint Killo telling us, look, we played so much better week two versus week one, not just with the outcome of the game, but just the, what you saw on tape and things were, were so much better. This will be a tough test, he said tonight. He goes, but I'm of the mindset, if we give up 28 points, we should still win the game. So, so far, pitching a shutout in the first quarter. Third and 20 for ACU, and it will be a handoff up the middle to JV on Sunday, and there will be nothing there met right around the line of scrimmage, and that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. A lot happened, but no points. UAC football on ESPN continues after these messages. Start of the second quarter in Abilene, Texas. It's UAC football on ESPN. No score. Incarnate Word in Abilene Christian. Zach Carlisle with Joseph Choppa, Koi Oslin, and the gang. And Abilene Christian will start with a punt here in the second quarter from Grant Nickel. And it brings a booming punt, and the ball is out. It gets away from Taylor, and it will scurry to the sideline. And UIW will jump on it and take over. But that was a massive hit. It gets away from Taylor. Egbo hit him. ACU just maintaining that aggressiveness on all faces of the football. Now UIW, happy they redeemed themselves on that one. All right, let's talk more about the history between these two teams and send it down to Koy Oslin. Yeah, Joseph, Zach, their aggression for these two teams is real. Since their ascension to Division I, ACU has been familiar with big games at home. They're 1-4 versus ranked opponents here in Abilene. Their last win coming against then number 11 Nichols in October 2018. 
but a familiar foe this time with Incarnate where they come into this game ranked ninth in the nation. Wildcats 7-4 all time versus the Cardinals having won their last matchup in 2019 versus their former conference rival. And despite all that and all the things that can happen in these past four years, these teams still want to beat each other more than ever. Guys? Coy, thank you. Yeah, a lot's happened. You got an Incarnate Word that's made a <laughs> second round appearance in 21 in the FCS playoffs and made it to the FCS semifinals a year ago after a 12 win campaign. Timeout on the field. No score, second quarter. Looks like it's an official review here uh, before this first down takeover for UIW. They have a decision. After further review, it's been determined that number four of Abilene Christian is guilty of a personal foul targeting 15 yards from the end of the play. Number four is disqualified for the remainder of the game. Targeting on Anthony Egbo Jr. His night comes to an end. And so they review it. During the timeout, an Egbo called for the illegal hit. It's a penalty, and it's a first down, and Egbo's night ends with a targeting call. And I want to focus on what this means for ACU. Anthony Egbo Jr. has played here for a, a while for ACU and is a veteran on that secondary end. But you go back and look at this play, and ACU TV did a great job on this angle, and Egbo just running full speed right there. The punt returner, you can kind of see a little slight helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, a little tough there. You might be able to see the shoulder down. And you see Keith Patterson there arguing for his star defense defensive back, but again, you want to think what does this mean now for ACU, not what it meant then. Starting cornerback out of the game now for the remainder, so you got Jolly who will take over at the bottom of the screen. Calzada goes the opposite way and a quick throw and catch to Trey Sigurds out of the backfield and he'll take it up near the 50 for a first down. And so the Cardinals will move. It's a first down at the 49 and a pickup of 10. Here's the impact players when UIW has the ball. We'll get to those in a moment. Calzada, one of them, and off the fake. He's got some time, slings it, and it's incomplete. Off the hands of Brandon Porter. Here are those impact players when the Cardinals have the ball. And now the Cardinals offense wants to take advantage of the momentum with now Egbo Jr. out for the game. Patrick Jolly, ACU wants to lean on him. He's a very intelligent player. He's also getting a cybersecurity certificate as a grad student. So very high IQ on and off the field. And I think who better to lean on to lead that secondary group with Egbo out than Patrick Jolly. Second down, it's a handoff coming right, a little bit of room, but it's dragged down from behind. Siggers is pulled down in a flag. Colby Warkington on the tackle. Was it an illegal tackle as the flag comes out? Pulls him down from behind and a flag on top of it. John Kellermeyer will tell us more. Flag was made after Workington made the stop. It looked like he pulled the jersey down to get the Siggers. Here is the call. There is no foul for horse collar tackle. Third down. And yeah, not even close to horse collar. He pulled right at the jersey number. Did not get the hand up top there, so no gain on the play. Third and 10, and I want to talk about the secondary change for ECU. Aaron Reynolds is going to take over a corner. The transfer from Incarnate Word, who now <laughs> takes over at corner number 13 in purple for Abilene Christian. He will defend at the top of your screen, going up against his former Cardinals. And it's just like ball camp for Aaron Reynolds right here. <laughs> Third and 10. Not much pressure all day for Calzada to the outside. There a little bit of room close to the marker is C.J. Hardy. Where's the spot? It looks like a couple of yards short. Fourth down. Mark him out of the 44. It is fourth and three coming up. And Calzada did a great job at just managing his time. He saw C.J. Hardy there for a while trying to get something deeper, but just had to go get a completion. Now uh, setting up here for another play. They'll appear to be going for it on fourth and three at the 44 of Abilene Christian. 
YW already three for five this season on fourth down. They don't get this one off. Might have been a timeout first. King Courtney Warren takes their first timeout. 30 seconds. Timeout for the Cardinals to think out. over this fourth and three. Early in the second, a big fourth down when we come back. Hey Wildcats, I'm Tanya Harvin at the Tanya Harvin Team and Burger by Rail. We are all about giving back to those On fourth, so on fourth and three, UIW is going to go for it here in the early part of this second quarter in Abilene Christian territory. Calzada is going to throw, and it depends on the spot. Doesn't look like CJ Harding got enough. Abilene Christian is going to turn UIW over on downs. This is what the ACU defense needed, capitalizing on the momentum. UIW, you see trips right, you see them stacked up together, but UIW just couldn't get it to convert an ACU. Big play right there. Guess who made the hit? Aaron Reynolds, <laughs> the former Cardinal, turns his former team over on downs. 13 in purple makes the play. Zach, it's just like fall camp. He's going back to the good old days in San Antonio for Aaron Reynolds and make a big play there coming off and substituting for Anthony Eggbo Jr. A lot has happened in the first two minutes of quarter number two, and McIver's going to go up top for Tristan Golinley, who almost made an acrobatic catch over the shoulder. Incomplete as ACU takes their first shot of the game. Ronald Wilson in coverage. Second and 10. And because you're ACU, you have those big time playmakers out on the perimeter. McIver recognizing it, just trying to give it a little over the shoulder, a little tuck pass right there. Could have been another sports center top play, just like the Henry season opener. Looked like a flag, and we got the announcement from John Kellermeyer. And so it will back Abilene Christian up five yards to first and 15. Wanted to take that first deep shot of the game. Meanwhile, you got ECU who dominated that opening drive. Nine minutes, they're winning the time of possession of the total yards. And meanwhile, it's still a no score, 0-0 zero, zero game. And now the Wildcats to the ground and Dobbins found the edge. And he's able to take it to the 45 yard line for a pickup of eight to get at least the penalty yardage back and then some. Who better to get you out of a penalty yarded situation than the ACU veteran Jeremiah Dobbins leading the way in the running back room. Back to him again, left side, and a play made by Odele Adeoye. He was an All-American, number one. He was an All-American at, at Sacramento State, was at Texas for a bit, now in his second year with UIW, a tremendous talent on the defensive line, and a third and four here for the Wildcats. Another third down situation for ACU. McIver's got to capitalize on this one to keep this momentum and rhythm alive on offense. Abilene Christian is one for four on third down so far tonight. McIver with a late blitz coming to the outside and a catch by Jed Castles. Stay away in coverage, and Castles is becoming a reliable target for number one. And we notice McIver's cadence there pre-snap and recognizing that Castles is going to have one-on-one -on -one with a little bit of a nickel safety there, and he's taking Castles all day. McIver looking again. Double coverage up in the air and picked off. Trey Richardson, who has the only two picks on the season for the Cardinal defense comes up with a big play for UIW. And McIver is known as a gunslinger, but these type of decisions you cannot make if you're ACU, especially when you're having a good rhythmic ground attack, just unfortunate for ACU. Big time throw and a big time interception by Richardson, a grad student out of Houston. We have an injury timeout. They tend to a Cardinal. UIW gets it back. Well, it's been an eventful second quarter, hasn't it? No score.
The first interception on the season for Maverick McIver. And Incarnate Word takes it away and takes over here early in the second quarter. And Zach Calzada is going to sling it to the outside. And Porter doesn't have a lot of room after the catch was made. And so you figure the first quarter took about 28 minutes of real time to get the entire quarter in. It's been about 25 minutes of real time. And we played four minutes of the second quarter. Is that a catch on the sideline? It's incomplete. Looking for Jalen Campbell. That was awfully close to getting a foot down as UIW took a shot down the sideline. Someone's got to take advantage of the tempo, and I think UIW wants to be the person to do that. Trying to get that one foot in with the college football rules, but just couldn't get it. Nice throw by Calzada, but UIW wishes they could have had that one. See if they end up taking a look at that or not. Right now, incomplete third and six. Was that right foot? That was close. It looked like it was dragging in or was in already, and you just need that one. So we'll see what they conclude here. Clint Killo is begging the officials to look at. See if they do ahead of this third down. Trying to get it to Campbell. Did he get a foot down or not? And now we just have a stoppage. It doesn't appear that the replay official has signaled down to review. We'll see. Well. After review, it's been determined it was a completed catch. First down. It's a catch. They're overturning it. They're overturning the ruling and calling it a catch for Jalen Campbell. Well, I knew I saw that right foot from Campbell right there. Or excuse me, that left one right there. You see it That's planted there, and you just need not two, but one right there. Great catch right there from Jalen Campbell. That's big time. Out of College Station, Texas, he got to campus in 2018 to UIW. And Campbell in his 48th game for the Cardinals. Terrific catch down the sideline. UIW in business as ACU brings four. Calzada runs out of time. He can move a bit and out of bounds inside the 35, but we have a flag down in the backfield. This may be coming back. Holding number 27 offense. 10-yard penalty, first down. Holding on Dalton Meyer, the backup tight end. Right here on your left side. And there we go, Calzada. You see the hold right there in the jersey against Sincere Massey, the transfer from Texas Tech. And Calzada, the second time rolling out to his left. And you'll see how ACU wants Calzada to continue to do that and not just keep him in the pocket. Talk more about Zach Calzada here in a second. Makes it first and 20 at the Abilene Christian 46. Off the fake, Calzada, time, looking, all day. Surveys, and it is a catch by Caleb Chapman at the 40-yard line. And if you don't know the story for Zach Calzada, started his career at Texas A&M, and boy, did he make a name for himself beating <laughs> Alabama a couple of years ago. Transfers to Auburn, gets banged up. He's as healthy as he's been in two years, and down the seam, it is complete into the red zone for Brandon Porter. And Clint Kello saying he can make every throw in the book. That's one right there. It's a very short list of quarterbacks who can say that they beat in a really tight game the University of Alabama. Zach Calzada is on that list. Very talented. You're seeing it now. He's getting into his rhythm. He's getting his chemistry down with the receivers. They're just attacking the Wildcats secondary in space. You're seeing it now as they near the red zone territory. Transferred to Auburn in 2022. Didn't play before having shoulder surgery. And it comes to Incarnate Word. It's a handoff up the middle. Trey Siggers, and he doesn't think he was, or rather it's uh, Jarrell Wiley. He didn't think he was down, but he was. Markham at the 13. Wiley thought he could keep up, uh, just get back up and keep going. And that elbow might have been down, but not much else was. He didn't think for sure that he was down. But right now it's just a gain of three. 
in the red zone are these Cardinals. This high flying offense that can score at will. And they've done it with big names over the last few years. Calzada wants to join in on the fun. The quarterback position throws it to the end zone. The fade incomplete looking for Chapman. Number 23 with breakup. Patrick Jolly. And Jolly in coverage for ACU third down on the way. This is where the intelligence and decision making of Calzada comes in. Motions his receiver out right. You'll notice that you get information off of those pre-snap motions, recognizing that ACU's manned up against the perimeter players for UIW. What does that mean for Calzada? Throw it to your receiver who's winning that one-on-one -on -one matchup. If you're ACU, got to go zone here to avoid and kind of combat what Calzada's thinking in his head. UIW 0 for 3 tonight on third down. In motion, Brandon Porter, Calzada throwing away. It is picked in the end zone. Patrick Jolly with the interception. He's got the only other pick this year for ACU, and he's got his second of the year. And ACU's defensive coordinator, Skylar Cassidy, knowing that Calzada is going to continue to attack man coverage with the pre-snap motion, recognizing that it's in man. I think Coach Cassidy knows that, hey, I got better defensive backs than your receivers. I believe in guys like Patrick Jolly, and you're seeing that here. Jolly doing a great job at keeping the receiver behind him, making himself in front of the ball, and he runs away with it. Patrick Jolly leading the way for the Wildcats defense. And that's why he's one of our impact players for tonight's game. So Jolly goes to the top of the screen. Egbo is out of the game after targeting call. And now interceptions on back-to-back -back drives for both of these offenses. Maverick McIver and company take over at the 20 for ACU in a game that's still scoreless. And this is a loose football. It's on the turf. Who's on it? Abilene Christian might have jumped back on it. McIver was able to go down and grab it after it got away on the handoff. A little miscommunication right there from kind of that halfback sweep coming in to the left side for McIver. Now second and 11. You want to calm down after that big momentum play for your defense. You have your student body roaring right to your left in the student section, but second 11 just continue to make the right reads and play well in this quarterback friendly system. On the handoff, it's Jeremiah Dobbins, and he squirts his way through across the 30. On the run, number 21. And he's got the first. When you can just turn around and hand it to 21, takes it to the 32. It's complimentary football, and McIver knows that if I'm not getting those reads, I'm going to hand it off to Dobbins. And Dobbins will take it again for about three. Straight up the middle as well as we get closer to the halfway point of the second quarter. I was really curious what style we would see coming into this thing. UIW said, I, look, if we give up 28, we should still win the game. They can play in shootouts, and they have for a half decade now. Abilene Christian, a little more defensive-oriented, lower scoring, clock control, and so far, nothing in the middle of the second quarter. I'd say advantage Abilene Christian so far. Second down at seven. Off the fake, McIver. Looking, caught, go lightly at the 50 into UIW territory. A pickup of 21 to the Kansas transfer, go lightly. This is how an excellent ground game sets up McIver for success. First play action pass for ACU on this game so far. You run the ball well. Well, what can you set up the play action pass? There you go, Tristan go lightly making another great catch for his team here tonight. Into Cardinal territory. Noah Caldwell in motion. It's a straight handoff, and it's been the Jeremiah Dobbins drive, and he takes it for six more. If you can hammer out six on first down, this becomes a pretty friendly offense here. And you're also able to do that and be comfortable with running with Dobbins or Sunday or whoever's out there in the backfield because of your offensive line. Just that inside blocking, whether it's that slide protection or the uh, combo blocking, ACU has really great confidence in their offensive line to protect not only McIver, but set up running lanes for Dobbins, and he's having a great night here so far. Blaine Taylor at the top of your screen, Waydell Jones at the bottom for the Wildcats. 
Captain Dobbins got six on first down. This is his 13th carry of the first half. Takes a shot right at the 40 yard line. Ronald Wilson, the safety, comes up and makes a big hit. On the carry for the Wildcats, number 21, Jeremiah Dobbins. McIver under center, you know it's going to be a halfback zone or a little bit of a power running game, if you will, and now setting up a short another third down scenario for the Wildcats. We'll see if they continue to trust in Dobbins or Sunday or out in their backfield or if they give it to McIver for a short game. Third and four. For Abilene Christian, they will give it to Dobbins, and he doesn't gain anything. Nothing on the ground for 21. Stephen Parker was in there on the D-line. Substitution infraction, defense, 12 players on the field. Five-yard penalty, results in the first down. But they got the snap off first before the Cardinals could get off the field. They're called for 12 men. And first down, ACU. First well, you see it here, the ACU Wildcats on third and four. It's not a pass. You're relying on Jeremiah Dobbins, and because of that penalty from UIW, an amazing play from Stephen Parker. It ruins it, and now you're giving back your opponent that first and ten. It's these self-inflicted wounds that UIW is going to have to come to terms with and say, hey, we got to get rid of them in order to beat this Wildcats here tonight. So now at the 35-yard line of UIW, <laughs> ACU will hand it off again. Dobbins carry number 14. It's six more on first down. This is some kind of push from this offensive line. It's get the chunk yardage from your running back and also let the clock wind down. Kind of reminds you of what ACU's game plan was the very first drive of the game, just milking the clock down, keeping Calzada and his offense off the field. And I think you're doing that at a really ex excellent rate for Abilene Christian. Second and four. Dobbins again, averaging up over five and a half yards a carry tonight. Breaks a tackle at the 15. Jeremiah Dobbins, what a run. Touchdown. game working for Abilene Christian. Well, it was only a matter of time before one ACU running back breaks free with that elite offensive line, paving room for that running back. And who better than your leading rusher on the night and on the season, Jeremiah Dobbins, the ACU veteran, putting boards, points on the board first for his Wildcats. Kyle Ramsey for the extra point. After the interception for Patrick Jolly, ACU goes eight plays. And 80 yards, Dobbins with a 29-yard touchdown run. And we've got points, 7-0, Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian with the first points of the night, leading at 7-0, taking an interception by Patrick Jolly in the end zone, and ACU goes 80 yards in eight plays for the first points of the ball game. And Kyle Ramsey will kick it away. And out the back of the end zone it goes. How about the first touchdown of the season for Jeremiah Dobbins from 29 yards out? Well, Zach, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the running game isn't broke for the Wildcats, especially for the ACU veteran in Jeremiah Dobbins. It was only a, a, mount, a matter of time before he broke loose with that offensive line and playing that complimentary football. And Jeremiah Dobbins just seeing the end zone for his team and kind of shifting the tide for the Wildcats here in the first half. 14 carries for 95 yards in this first half for Dobbins. And sent out UIW. A team that put up over 600 yards of offense a week ago has 111 and are being shut out of the first half. Big drive here before halftime for Zach Calzada and the gang from the 25. 
Screen throw to the middle, trying to get a big play, and they get a first down for Brandon Porter as he scoots away from a couple of tackles and picks up 13. This is a wrinkle that Coach Killo goes to a lot. It's called a GT screen, kind of getting three receivers to the right and getting that slot open on that short little quick screen. Calzada to the air again, and a high point catch for C.J. Hardy. Able to go get it just at 5'11 out of the slot, makes the grab. And now Calzada trying to get back into those short rhythm throws, setting something long for his Cardinals. Quick screen again to the outside, and it's incomplete. Could not get it into the hands of Hardy. Porter was over there as well. Third and short for UIW. Coach Keller, you're thinking, okay, how can we kind of catch the ACU defense kind of out of position there? And I think Calzada is going to come down to him, his cadence, his pre-snap reads, especially on this big third and one. Clint Killo, the 30-year-old, the head coach of UIW. And the Cardinals will hand it. No, Calzada's going to keep it. Daylight in front of him. Zach Calzada, what an answer from the Cardinals. 52 yards to the house. On third and one, Calzada with his legs for six. If you're a defense on third and one, you're expecting Calzada to give it to his running back. Extent. Instead, he surprises ACU's defense by keeping it. Now Calzada, and I said before, he's got to be a little bit more mobile. The scouting report says he's going to remain a pocket passer, but Calzada goes against the odds, goes against the scouting report, and has an amazing run right there. Remember when uh, UIW was getting shut out and only had 100 yep. yards of offense? The extra point is good for Mason Long. Baller, four plays, 75 yards in the blink of an eye. That's what this offense is capable of. Now UIW, again, coming off of a weekend where you have at least a total of 600 yards, and now <laughs> it's a really different ball game. If you're out there at Wildcat Stadium, you're like, okay, finally there's points on the board. But it's been a chess match between Coach Patterson, Coach Killo, about getting these points on the board. It's been really physical, battle of the trenches, seeing running game and Calzada really putting um, his leadership ability and his mobile game um, to the test here and to the forefront, and now we're tied up and kind of going back to ACU, seeing if they can, uh, can milk the clock here, heading in to the second half here in just a little bit. And now the focus shifts back to the ACU offense, who's got three and a half minutes and two timeouts to work with, and so Mason Lawler will kick it away. Markel Jones back deep for ACU. And this will be returnable from the one. Jones with some space brought down outside the 25. And that's where ACU will take over at the 27 yard line. Now for the Wildcats, you want to use as much time as you can. I think before on that previous drive, Calzada, I think he's found his stride. He's found his rhythm. I think if you're ACU, you recognize that. Go back to Dobbins. Go back. Play slow and steady. If you can get in field goal range, go for it. If you see a shot up uh, long down the field, go for it. But just use the most amount of time that you can here in the remainder of the second quarter. JV on Sunday, the back to start the drive. And number zero gets it for the Wildcats, and he breaks one. JV on Sunday, and the UIW territory, a 30-yard burst on first down. Just excellent blocking right there from Allen Hatton, Jacob Thielen, and again, JV and Sunday, that breakaway back, and you notice that he had an opportunity right there to save some time on the clock and go out of bounds, but instead, the philosophy for ACU is stay in bounds, milk the clock, stay on the field, and now you're seeing the clock is ticking here for ACU. Offenses are starting to get going here in this 7-7 game. And from the 42, Sunday, the cut. Oh, broke a tackle. Flag is down. And he's dragged down in the backfield. Ayadele Adeoye was the first man there, and he's a little slow to get up. But a flag is down. 
Looked like right as that initial tackle was trying to be made that Sunday broke away from. Thrown from the sideline. Personal foul, face mask, number one. Defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It looked like right as they were trying to make that tackle, yeah, the face mask was grabbed there a day away, grabbing Sunday's helmet. Yeah, just a great angle right there from our ACU TV replay and camera team there, just kind of showing us what we need to see, and now ACU gaining and moving the chains. But again, clock is still ticking, and this is exactly what ACU wants right here. Now at the 27, back to Sunday, and he runs into a wall. What a play by Steven Parker. Swings down Sunday. And it's a loss of four on the play. And if there's anyone on the Cardinals defensive front that's going to put a stop to ACU's excellent ground game, it's got to be number zero, Stephen Parker. And you can already see it there. But ACU, again, you just want to take it slow. Keep running the football. Take your shots. Take your reads if you can see them on one-on-one -on -one coverage manned up against the Cardinals. But UIW maintaining that aggressiveness here defensively. Parker, a first-team All-Southland conference a year ago. Back to the ground. And Sunday again, Richardson and Foster in on the stop. Maybe a gain of one. And an interesting decision there, because now it's third and long as we uh, tick under a minute 20 to go in, until halftime. And Zach, this, you're right. This is where it does get interesting, because you know the clock is on your side. You want to keep the momentum on your side of the ball. But you know here on third and 13, you may not be able to get away with a halfback draw up the middle or a screen. You might have to go into your medium pass concepts and rely on McIver to keep the drive alive here before going into the next half. I'm a little surprised. A little surprised that uh, UIW did not call a time out there. And so they did not uh, call a timeout, but now a timeout called here before a third and 13. I thought UIW may want to preserve a little time uh, and instead they let the clock run down to 49 seconds before this third down. So be curious to see what ACU does here. Technically they're in field goal range, yep. Kyle Ramsey be about 48 yards from here, but it's third and 13 for the Wildcats. And having a guy like Kyle Ramsey, he says, okay, maybe we don't have to rely on McIver, even though he's extremely capable of getting the Wildcats that first down off of a medium or long pass, maybe even a screen pass. You have that insurance in Kyle Ramsey and saying, hey, that's all right. If we don't pick up the fourth down, we can call number 51 and Kyle Ramsey to try and get some more points or three points on the board. UIW's got a couple of timeouts, third and 13. See what the decision is. It is a handoff and losing yardage is ACU Sunday with nothing. Brandon Richard was in there. And it's fourth down at the 34 and a timeout here. And ACU keeping the decision to stay with the ground game then now be coach Patterson, coach offensive coordinator Ryan Pugh, you say, do we bring out number 51 in the kicking unit? Do we go for it? What do we do here? It's going to be an interesting call. Chase Carter, big number eight in on that play as well. 36 on the game mark. So a timeout was called with 36 seconds. And so this is a 52, around a 52 yarder from here. Ramsey one for one on the year. He's only attempted the one. It was from 55 yards away. Ramsey two for two on this season. This is his second longest attempt of the year to try to give ACU the lead before the half. Good snap, good hold, Ramsey, no doubt about it. Abilene Christian takes the lead. The 52 yards away. As an offense, you don't have to panic because you didn't convert 
on this drive. Fourth and 17, setting up that 52-yarder. You have a guy who can make those kicks, Cal Ramsey, proving why he has been the special team player of the week for the United Athletic Conference. I mean, Abilene Christian went eight for 21 in the kicking game a year ago. Three for three this year, two of them over 50 plus and a 10 to seven lead. And they did exactly what you wanted to see, Joseph, which yep. for ACU was use clock and get points here before halftime. And I think it would have been different if you didn't have that type of kicker in Cowell Ramsey. And, and I think out there for the fans is like, you don't realize until you look at these close, gritty, physical games where post game win or loss, you look back and say, oh, it's because I had a good kicker. It's because I had that kicking game that I can rely on. Even though you're at that 52 uh, type of range where you don't want to be at you have Kyle Ramsey and he's had an excellent year so far here in your number one in the purple and white. DeKalen Taylor back to receive the kickoff for UIW. Ramsey will send it away 31 seconds. And again I was more surprised that UIW didn't call the timeouts on the defensive side to preserve maybe some more time to get their offense the ball back before the half, they opted not to do so. So 31 seconds, and Ramsey will kick it away. And Taylor won't touch it, and it'll come out to the 25. 31 seconds, two timeouts. It's a big play offense. Um, see if they just sit on this and go to half, or if they try to go get some points going to be interesting because you have a quarterback who now I think compared to the first quarters now found his rhythm a little bit I think the offense uh, with uh, Connor McQueen's offense uh, for the Cardinals has really found their stride and kind of starting to maybe they have already kind of figured out the secondary for ACU but it's going to be interesting what UIW comes out here if they kind of rely on Calzada to say hey move the chains drive down the field get some points or like you said Zach hey 31 seconds on the clock Let's go to the locker room, regroup, come uh, the third quarter. From the 25, it is a handoff. And nothing doing for Trey Siggers. And the Cardinals may let the rest of the half run, although they are getting up to the line rather quickly. No gain on that play. Final 15 seconds, they're going to run another play. Calzada is going to throw. Running around, schoolyard play, but behind the defense is Marquez Perez. He's out of bounds with two seconds at the 26 yard line. Are you kidding? 49 yards with two seconds left. You can't draw this up, but when you have a talented quarterback like Calzada, recognizing ACU's in cover three, you want to throw it vertically downfield, make something happen out of nothing, moving out of the pocket. UIW, just an excellent play right there. Oh my goodness, what a play for Calzada. Showing off the arm as well. He's one of three FBS transfer QBs on the roster. Calzada with a heck of a play. And you can see why this is a guy that took down the University of Alabama powerhouse in college football because he can make plays when something's not there. As an offensive coordinator, you call a play. You have your first, second, third reads. You have your check downs. Calzada moving out of the pocket. That's the fourth time ACU has forced him to roll out to either his left or right. Hasn't gotten anything positive there, but I would would say that that was one of the best plays from Calzada here this season. All of a sudden it's a 44 yard field goal and we get to see Mason Lawler attempt a field goal for the first time this year. We have a whistle and a timeout and coach Keith Mason, Patterson's going to make Lawler think about it. With two seconds to go. You figure one run, they're gonna sit on it, and then Calzada, magic for 49 yards. And again, you see the pressure here from the Wildcats. Calzada not liking what he's seen in the middle of the field, rolling out to his right, a tackler for the Wildcats missing, and then just finding someone right open, right along the sideline for UIW. Again, having a quarterback that can make those type of throws and make those type of reads is a difference maker here for UIW. Both teams out of timeouts now. What a wild sequence of events. 
Lawler to try to even it before halftime from 44 yards away. The kick is good, and what a conversion at the end of the half for the Cardinals to tie it up at 10. All in the second quarter, 10-10. We've got halftime on ESPN coming up. Halftime here in Abilene, Texas, and a wild second quarter to get this thing even at 10. Nationally ranked, ninth ranked Incarnate Word at Abilene Christian as we welcome you upstairs, Zach Carlisle with Joseph Choppa. Boy, it was a quiet first quarter. The second quarter, here come the fireworks, and this thing got even 10 to 10, and it was about as even of a first half as you could ask for. It was about time that points were on the board, and we're seeing the clash of styles. I think ACU is really glad that it's been really slow, but if you're UIW, it's about, about time that they have those big time players making big time plays. Yeah, as we take a look at the numbers, in the first half for this 10-10 game. UIW, a lot of that came on the last couple of drives. The big 52-yard touchdown run for Zach Calzada, and then a hope and a prayer for 49 yards there to get the conversion at the end of the half. I wonder if this means the offenses will get going here in the second half. Well, if you're a fan out there watching, you can only hope, right? But you can see here for UIW, it's the Zach Calzada show already getting into rhythm. And for ACU, relying on the running game for Jeremiah Dobbins. The only question is, how can McIver come out better here in the second half? And I shouldn't say to get the offenses get going. The points may yeah. get going, because <laughs> the yardage has been there. They've moved the ball well. Uh, in the first half, but just sitting at 10 to 10, and it was a scoreless first half of the ball game. And so, yeah, I mean, ACU goes nine minutes on the opening drive. They come up with no points, and then all of a sudden it just goes back and forth. The defenses are playing well, but then fireworks, fireworks, a couple of interceptions, and we're 10 10. It was only a matter of time before something, a spark were to light up for both sides. And you can see here Calzada making big plays and now putting the pressure on ACU defensively and also McIver offensively to come out better here in the second half and lead his Wildcats, even when you have an excellent ground game with Jeremiah Dobbins, the leading rusher tonight and the leading rusher all 2023 season long. Yeah, it's been a lot of uh, the passing attack for UIW, but they did get the big touchdown run. And then, as you said, it's been a ton of Dobbins in that ground game for ACU. What do you think you're going to see in the second half? I think we're going to see McIver starting to make those big throws. That's been the question all season. He's been efficient. He's done what Coach Patterson asks of him. But now, McIver, we're going to give you the keys to the offense. Go make something happen for our ball club. Been a fun one. 10-10 at the break. We've got more halftime from Abilene, Texas coming up. Second half is coming up here in Abilene, Texas. A few moments away in this 10 to 10 game. Offenses were slow to start. Then they got going. The quarterback's a big part of that. Maverick McIver, McIver and Zach Calzada. Let's talk more about the Cardinal QB. Send it down to Coy Oslin. 
Yeah, Zach, let's talk a little bit more about Zach Calzada. You touched on these things, but let's line them out a little bit more. 2018, three-star quarterback out of Georgia. Zach Calzada commits to Texas A&M. Limited playing time in 19 and 20, but 2021, he gets eight, he gets 10 starts and 12 appearances, putting up a 124 passer rating. Really good job from him that season. Transfers to Auburn, injures his non-throwing shoulder. Then there's a coaching change at Auburn. He transfers to Incarnate Word, and here he is lighting up the offense for Incarnate Word. Guys, back to you. Coy, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, Zach Calzada, I mean, what a story. I mean, everybody talks about, well, this is the guy that beat Bama, right? Isn't it? this the guy? That, yeah, of course he is. And, you know, what was attractive to San Antonio was the fact that UIW has been an incredibly quarterback friendly offense for years. You go back to John Copeland in 2018, Cameron Moore, Ward was incredible. Lindsey Scott Jr., the Walter Payton award winner a year ago. I mean, the, the quarterbacks fare well with what UIW does, and all of a sudden, Calzada, he's next in line. Well, I love San Antonio. It's a beautiful city, so you can understand why that was key in his decision making from coming from the Power Five level here to UIW, but it's also guys like Coach Clint Killo selling the program, saying, hey, this is a quarterback friendly offense. We want you to fit in to what we're selling, and that's uh, winning with intention. That's the motto for Incarnate Word. We're seeing it here tonight. We've seen all season long and for coach Keith Patterson it's character discipline and toughness we're also seeing that here tonight so the styles between these two programs has been really interesting here tonight and uh, we'll have to can't wait for more here come the second half what's fun about this is it's is it's strength on strength Keith yep. Patterson a defensive coordinator for years has that defensive pedigree at Clint Killa wide receivers coach he goes I take a lot of pride in that <laughs> wide receiver room I brought a lot of them to yep. San Antonio, he's a native of San Antonio, went to UIW. His first year playing for the Cardinals was their first year FCS back in 2013. And all of a sudden, this Carnet Word program has been put on the map with what they did that run last year. They've run 22 games over the last two seasons. And now, all of a sudden, they have high expectations for this group that was preseason top 10 coming, coming into the year. San Antonio, South Texas loves their football. And who better to continue to lead this successful Incarnate Word program than one of their own? UIW alum and kind of been in the coaching circles for the past couple of successful seasons now. And now a 30 years old coach, Clint Killo, getting his shot at the head coaching position. And we're already seeing their maintaining the high flying offense. They want to put points on the board. It's quarterback friendly, but they can also challenge you defensively. Here's what I love too. They get the two for one chance here because UIW with that massive, crazy play for 49 yards to set up the field goal at the buzzer and they get the ball to start the third quarter. This feels like that big first possession of the third year, not only for UIW a chance to take their first lead, but for this Abilene Christian defense as well. And Zach Calzada is a guy that once you get him going, it's kind of like Stephen Curry. It's hard to kind of cool him down a little bit, and you got Zach Calzada in a rhythm, and we'll see if that can translate here. And Maverick McIver kind of getting into his own here in the second half. Cardinals out to the 25 for their first possession of the third. So Cal's out of 13 for 19, 174 yards through the air. Did have the interception, but the 52 yard touchdown run as well as he uses his legs. I expect this thing to try to get going even more. I think we could see some big offensive numbers here in the second half. And if we do, advantage UIW because they know how to light up the scoreboard. And I think in the locker room, coach defensive coordinator Skylar Cassidy recognizes that. So now you're going to try and disguise some coverages, whether it's the, out of those uh, blitzes or even just backing up four and maybe a little bit of a cover four look defensively, trying to move Zach Calzada off balance and try to get him out of rhythm here in the second half. 235 yards of offense in the first half for the Cardinals. Quick throw to the outside to get the drive started and the completion to the boundary for C.J. Hardy. And Clint Killo told us that's a, a kind of an extension of their run game as well. They certainly yeah, it's Reynolds. very fundamental. You'll see it a ton in college football, just a screen game trying to get your quarterback in rhythm. There's that quick throw to the outside again. 
And tight roping the sideline, Marquez Perez doesn't get a lot out of it. Third down and four coming up. Perez, the big catch to set up the field goal before the break to tie the game up at 10. First third down of the third quarter. UIW one for five on third down of the first half. Opening drive of the third. The back is Jarrell Wiley. ACU brings five. Calzada stands tall, delivers a bullet, and breaking a tackle, Brandon Porter, and he's carrying Wildcats into ACU territory. And he's still going, and the momentum all the way to the 42-yard line, and that's a gain of 28 yards. And it's the cadence from Calzada recognizing pre-snap. It's too high out there, cover to look. And what does that mean? You'll have something open in the middle of the field, and who better than number 18, Brendan Porter? Calzada again with time to throw. Now he's got to do a maneuver. His escapability. Houdini out there, a flag's down, pass caught by Wiley, Jarrell Wiley, breaking tackles, touchdown to the pylon, but there is a flag down. And it might be coming back. John Kellermeyer, our referee. Personal foul, illegal blindside foul, number 63 offense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Stanley Mark, the left guard, called for an illegal blindside block. You can't block somebody who has their back and facing the opposite way of the line of scrimmage, and so Mark might have done that. Blindside, that's 15, and it backs them into their own side of the territory. It negates a wild play. I mean, <laughs> Calzada can make anything happen out there. You just can't draw that up, and as a defense, you're like, where is this on the scouting report? You just make something happen. Just making people miss, and that illegal blindside block, you don't see that a lot from veterans like Stanley Mark, but it's these self-inflicting wounds that, again, ruin drives successful plays like this, but if you're Calzada, you know as talented as you are, break down the Wildcat defense, you know you can have something like that again. Stanley Mark had his back away from the line of scrimmage. Calzada going to put it up again or take off. Spins at the 50 and takes it for about 12. Back into ACU territory, second and 12. Coming up, gets a good chunk of that penalty yardage back. Talented thrower in Calzada knows this defense is going to want to make him run, and he's had a successful night at that so far as well as slinging the ball downfield. And now the handoff. Coming right side, good gain. Trey Siggers, it appeared, took that one on the right side, and this is third and manageable now. Third and three here for the Cardinals. Boy, a great job of managing first and 25 to make it to third and three. Blitz coming, Calzada stands in, runs out, gotta make it happen again, and down he goes. Kenton will hoit the linebacker. The Illinois State transfer a massive loss out of field goal range and the Cardinals will punt. Well, Will Hoyt knows that Calzada's gonna roll out somewhere, recognizing that he doesn't have his hot routes open and Will Hoyt says, uh-uh, you're not making an amazing play again. Getting the key stop right there for his Wildcats. Loss of 18, that is just the second sack allowed this year by the UIW offensive line. That's ACU's ninth sack of the season. Nearly got home for that block. The ball is headed towards the sideline. The Aquila got rid of that somehow. It was nearly blocked by Chittabem Labeche. But Will Hoyt has the sack, a loss of 18 yards. Well, a great job at just attacking the offensive line from the outside, just trying to get away from that right tackle. Did a great job at doing that, knowing Calzada is going to try and make something happen. He's been successful at that all night, but taking the matter into his own hands, saying, I am going to put my rest of the 10 defenders on my back and get a stop here and give my offense the ball and make something happen here for the first offensive drive for the Wildcats here in the third. ACU takes over at the 25. 
First time touching it for the Wildcats. McIver 64 yards passing. Dobbins had a huge first half. He's been getting five to six yards every time he touches it. 21 on the carry for the Wildcats. And Dobbins up nearing 100 himself. ACU nearing the 200 yard mark. McIver eight for 14 for 64 yards in his first interception of the season in the first half. Second and four. They'll sling it to the right side, trying to get a block, and they don't get it. Jones, two on one, defending, and T.G. Paul with a nice play out of his cornerback spot. This is where the Cardinals defense is going to try and match the intensity that the Wildcats match them with defensively setting up another crucial third down for the Wildcats, putting the pressure on them to make something happen even though they're backed here in this interesting type of yardage. ACU was two for six on third down in the first half. Third and four. Cardinals back out of pressure. They bring just three. McIver with time. High throw, but Cooper McCaslin goes up to make the catch. Takes a shot from Brandon Richard, but it's a first down to the 41 and a pickup of 10. And this offensive line from ACU giving McIver time to make his reads. You know he knows his offense, and now Cooper McCaslin making a nice grab there. He's put in a lot of work this offseason, improving his route running, really just, you know, keeping and, and putting his head down into the playbook, and you know he knows the offense pretty well by getting them that first down. Three career catches all this season. The fourth-year man out of Hearst, Texas, the DFW area. First and ten. From the 41, oh, a low snap. That play goes nowhere from the beginning. Dobbins is erased by Darren Brown, but that play had a weird start with that low snap. That's a loss of six for ACU. Yeah, similar to uh, UIW's offensive drive. You don't see Stanley Mark making mistakes like that. You don't see Tay Yonta making some mistakes like that as well. The starting center for the Wildcats, number 70. It's these type of self-inflicted wounds that you got to go back in your play sheet and say, okay, second and 16, what can we do here now, um, here early in the second half? ACU way behind the chains, and they'll hand it. And down in the backfield again. Steven Parker made the play. Dobbins loses another yard. And third and forever coming up for Abilene Christian. Steven Parker known to be a defensive playmaker and he's already made some key plays both the second quarter and now here early in the third setting up the Wildcats for a third and 17. You know if your defensive coordinator McIver is going to sling the ball somewhere. Let's see what offensive coordinator Ryan Pugh has McIver run here in this interesting yardage. Parker had six tackles, four for loss, a sack and a half, a forced fumble, and a pass breakup. Last week, he was the Southland Defensive Player of the Week. Safe handoff on third down to Dobbins. Tackle made by Trey Richardson and Abilene Christian, who got behind the chains. Harder for them to come back from something like that uh, when you have such the negative play, so they will punt from just inside the 40. And I think the decision isn't, you know, of course you're having a, a great game in the running game itself with Jeremiah Dobbins leading the way, but you also trust your defense. You recognize kind of how the game is feeling. It's it's very physical battle of the trenches, and you trust your defense to go back out and get a stop. Grant Nickel, and this will be a fair catch for DeKalen Taylor at about the 12 booming punt of 50 yards as we approach the halfway point of the third quarter. Still 10-10, good one, UIW at ACU. The world needs more light bringers and courageous leaders who inspire us, game changers and risk takers who never play small, creative thinkers and God seekers who uplift us, you see, the future is ours to create. We hold it in our hearts. We mold it with our hands. We light the fire within.
a beautiful night here in the big country. HGTV is really special because you have an opportunity to dive in and to get started day one. You could start out on camera or you could start out in the studio, but if you want to direct or if you want to TD or if you want to operate cameras or do replays, you have the opportunity to do all of that and learn. If you have any love or any interest in TV or just really want to find a community of people who want to work hard and follow their passions, that's what ACU TV is. We are, near, we are nearing 500 yards of offense combined tonight for these two teams. Still just a 10-10 game, so not a ton of scoring. But UIW will have it for the second drive of this third quarter. They'll start at the 12-yard line, and Zach Calzada going to hand it off to Trey Siggers, and he'll get maybe a yard. And so... Neither team scores to start the third. Here we go again, and this Cardinal offense backed up on this one starting at the 12-yard line. Yeah, and it started with a great punt from uh, ACU starting punter Grant Nickel with the 50-yard punts and kind of setting Calzada back up here and see what he can do. Off the fake, going to go to the sideline, and is tipped and incomplete. And trying to intercept his former team was Aaron Reynolds off of his hands, a senior first-year Wildcat transfer from Incarnate Word. And you see Reynolds here just eyeing the quarterback as he backs up, trying to cover back in his zone, trying to utilize his length and his vertical ability to try and create a play there, which would switch the momentum tide. But a great play there um, from Aaron Reynolds to try and make something happen. Couldn't get it done, but setting up a third and 10 for UIW. Third and long. ACU brings three. Calzada way too high. Incomplete. Porter on that crossing pattern, and the Cardinals will punt. Yeah, one of the first times ACU doesn't really bring that standard four to five man pressure, making Calzada think. I think that threw him off a little bit, and Calzada just making a missed throw that you don't really see a talented quarterback like him make a lot. But now, again, giving the ball back to ACU, it's a clash of styles. Can ACU make something happen? Do they want to keep the ground game alive or let McIver loose? Make Let him make something happen because it's going to be a matter of time before he's going to have to. The Gila on to punt, backed up. AC will let it go, and out of bounds, it will skip across the 50. 40-yard punt, ACU, great field position. 10-10 game. Safe to say a defensive third quarter so far. That's Willie the Wildcat <laughs> loving what he sees in this 10-10 game. Got a top 10 UIW team on the road for their first three weeks of the season at UTEP, at Northern Colorado, now at Abilene Christian. We got a battle here in the third quarter. Goofy formation and on that kind of reverse-sided handoff, ACU gives it to uh, Markel Jones and he'll take it with the carry number two right around Markel Jones the line of scrimmage in fact right at it no gain on the play second and ten coming up for the CSU offense McIver again been talking about him a lot but it's this type of game where he's gonna have to show up and show out do more than just the little throws make something happen and lead your offense straight handoff this time because this has worked well tonight for Abilene Christian JV on Sunday just a gain of one tripped up by T.G. Paul. And ACU quickly has a third and nine. They would love to take advantage of this tremendous field position here by midfield, but they got a big third down right here. Yeah, well, another third down and already tonight, three of eight on that third down. Uh, conversion percentage, you rely on who? Number one for the Wildcats. We'll see what he does here. 10 for 16 
for 74 yards tonight, McIver. Third and nine. Time runs out, throws into traffic, incomplete for Blaine Taylor. And the Cardinal defense of the big time stop. A.J. Harris in coverage, and it's fourth down. Well, McIver can make those tight window throws. That's not the question. It's just can you find something a little bit easier? And you saw on the left side boundary, you had Tristan go lightly in that one-on-one -on -one coverage, and so you want to make that type of throw and not throw it into an aggressive secondary like That's the Cardinals like have. That. But now the UIW just doing nickel. a great job at being aggressive on both sides of the football. Grand Nickel will punt. Missed opportunity there for the Wildcats. Starting at midfield, Nickel sends one away. Taylor lets that one fly into the end zone. And so just a net of 31 on the punt. Cardinals it's will take it back over. It's been all defense so far in the third. Our early leaders sought a new campus on which to build a better future. Surely they could not have imagined how much their vision would grow. Today, Abilene Christian is recognized in national benchmarks for student success outcomes, research productivity, and athletic accomplishments. As we embark on next steps, we are uniquely poised to become one of the nation's premier Christian universities. We invite you to join us. We will climb higher together. Doctors and nurses are the foundation of healthcare, but it takes people from all different backgrounds, experiences, and education with unique talents and skills to fulfill our mission of providing high quality healthcare, emphasizing excellence and compassion consistent with the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Join our team of educators, nurses, accountants, pharmacists, environmental service techs, transporters, and more. Be part of something that matters. Be part of the mission. Apply today at hendrickhealth.org careers. was wild. All the 20 points have been scored in the second. And now this third quarter, 10 minutes into it, nothing doing so far. Defenses are playing well. Calzada, that's a big hit. Incomplete. Quick throw to Jalen Campbell and Elijah Moffitt lays down the wood. Moffitt is known as a Big time hitter, we saw it there, making a statement out of the wrinkles that Coach Kello likes to run. It's the screen game, it's the quick passes, then you get into your tempo type of offense. Elijah Moffitt ruining that for them here in the start of this drive. Moffitt, the leading tackler a year ago with 50 of them. And the leading tackler this season so far for the Wildcats. Screen time, no, Calzada down the sideline and a leaping grab, incomplete, and a late flag comes out. Going for Campbell down the sideline. Patrick Jolly in coverage, and it looks like it might be interference on Abilene Christian, it is. Yeah, we see it there, Patrick Jolly with that left arm, trying to avoid another great catch by Campbell, and in the flag there. Take another look. Trying to get it, Campbell caught a big one down the sideline in the first half, they went to him again. Well, here's the great thing about these replays. We get multiple <laughs> angles, and that one right there is a selling point for that call from the referee setting up a first and 10 for Zach Calzada and his Cardinal offense. Uh, initially, it looked like maybe just the feet got tangled yeah. up, but there was a little arm action in there, the too. Left one. And so you get the penalty yardage at a first down at the 35. UIW to the ground. No, Calzada keeps, and he had a big run in the first half, and he gets flipped upside down. Cardinal fans don't want to see that. It's a gain of seven. 
But uh, seeing your QB get his legs flipped up in the air, that's that's not what you want to see. That's a good problem to have when you want to keep your quarterback protected, but you know when he runs, you're going to get some good yardage. Calzada off the fake. Time to throw. Rolls out again. He has been Houdini tonight, trying to make some more magic and is incomplete. Going for Jalen Campbell. Nearly intercepted by Dorian Plumley, who is having himself a remarkable season so far at safety. Well, we saw Plumley just run around the entire ACU bench, knowing that he could have had that, could have had that one foot in bounds. Well, really would have shifted the tide here. You see it right there. He could have jumped that pass in front of Chapman out there in that little hitch route to the side. You know he wants that again, but because of his experience, because of his leadership and his poise and his calm, cool collectiveness, he knows he's going to make up for that in the long run. Third and three. Trips to the bottom of your screen for the Cardinals. Calzada looking the opposite way. Caught, turning up field for the first down. Caleb Chapman, who came in third on the team in receptions, makes a catch and takes it to the 42. Second grab of the night for Chapman. And they're in Abilene Christian territory. Cardinals waste no time. Calzada down he goes from behind. Kirby Coheely, the linebacker, his second sack of the year. Now the new Mike, middle linebacker for the Wildcats, Kirby Coheely. He's a playmaker. You want fast hybrid linebackers in the style of defense. Defensive coordinator Skylar Cassidy likes to play. You see why they're trying to match up mano a mano against playmakers like Zach Calzada, who's trying to move out of the pocket. Kirby Coheely leads the charge there. Coheely, the junior out of Iowa Park, Texas, 22nd career game tonight with Abilene Christian. Uh, hand it up the middle, trying to get some of the sack yardage back with uh, Jarrell Wiley. And maybe a one to the 45, third and 13 coming up for the Cardinals. A drive that was so promising, now a big third down as they try to get in field goal range. And both of these offenses have been challenged a little bit on third down scenarios and whether it's ACU trying to stay consistent with the ground game or UIW now putting the ball in Zach Calzada's hands. You can see it here on your screen lined up in those three by one sets. Coach Kilo likes to create some wrinkles out of those. We'll see what happens here. Third and 13. ACU brings three, drops eight to the right side through the hands of Perez. Would have been a short gain to the sideline. And on fourth and 13, Abilene Christian gets a stop. And UIW will punt it away. Well, Zach, it was a three by one set. UIW trying to spread out the defense of the Wildcats. It didn't work out there. Now giving the ball back to ACU. And we'll see what that offense can do. And again, had it right there on the money. That's your third kind of check down in that type of play. And kind of a trips right three by one set. But it didn't work out for them, uh, for the Cardinals. And another punt here underway. The Aquila. Punts it, trying to pin ACU deep. Dax Neese will fair catch it at the five. 40 yard punt. And Abilene Christian will take over it. So now we talked about this opportunity here, right? ACU, this would be, if they could do this tonight and get a win, it, it probably would be their biggest win in maybe five years or so where they be nationally ranked Nichols uh, back in 2018. Last year, there wasn't a lot of big wins, good wins on the resume. A 7-4 and four campaign came up short of making the playoffs. But this year, a chance at a 3-0 and start and a win over number nine in the country. This is a massive game in terms of resume building for these Wildcats here tonight. They start this drive at the five. And on the ground, why not? It's worked well. And it's Jeremiah Dobbins who is having himself a night. He's up over 100 now as he takes it to the 10. But a huge chance for ACU here tonight to get a top 10 win. We've heard it all 
leading up to this game. This game has playoff implications, but wait, we're just in the middle of September. That's how big this game is, to your point, Zach, and it's going to come down to plays. Now ACU kind of starting back inside the five, now picking up some yardage. We'll see how McIver can react to this defense. After a pickup of four, the right side, maybe another three or so. For Dobbins and the Wildcats will go quickly. Third and two. Go to Dobbins and he is stuffed and the Cardinals come up with a play. They win at the line of scrimmage. Glenn Killo said these guys are huge up front. ACU is on both sides of the line, and they win in the trenches that time. Well, that's one of our keys to the game for the Cardinals, isn't it, Zach? It's win the battle of the trenches, win the battle of the line of scrimmage, and we're seeing that here when you need it the most in the second half. Now for ACU side, the third down play calling has been interesting, very conservative. Again, Jeremiah Dobbins having a great night, but on those third down scenarios, even though you're backed up, it's interesting why, you, why you're not calling those passes but again trusting your defense and getting the job done against UIW. Nickel punts it needs a good one fair catch all the way back to the 35 needed a good one got a good one a 51 yard punt and the fair catch for DeKalen Taylor these defenses spectacular in the third we weren't sure if maybe that second quarter showing would leak over here into the second half and the defensive adjustments have been terrific. No points here in this quarter. Yeah, Zach, it's a chess match for both defensive coordinators for Incarnate Word and Abilene Christian. We're seeing Coach Skylar Cassidy for ACU giving Calzado some different looks. And now UIW's defensive front led by guys like Stephen Parker is again, you're matching up mano e mano against the trenches. A great offensive line between another great offensive line. Just a beautiful X's and no's a match here tonight for those football nerds out there. First down handoff. Drive starts at the 36. Took a while to bring down Trey Siggers <laughs> on that one. Sincere Massey, one of the big defensive linemen in there for ACU, big number 90. And Coach Patterson's talked about him a lot leading up to the season. Sincere Massey out of Texas Tech. He's a big body, and you can see why there he's lined up in the nose tap. Jerry Lawson as well, big number 95. Off the fake, Calzada wants a deep shot down the sideline. The pass is hauled in and caught. Brandon Porter going to the ground at the 24-yard line, a gain of 40 yards, and UIW goes quickly. Well, it's ball placement, and Zach Calzada is a great quarterback in doing that. Now you go tempo here, and let's see if they can ride that momentum. Before a review can come, you hand it off, and a quick run for Trey Siggers. It only got a couple of yards, but more importantly, no review, but it looked like a clean catch live for Porter going to the ground. And that play should take us to the end of the third quarter. What a battle in Abilene, Texas. Ninth ranked incarnate word. And Abilene Christian, it's 10-10. The fourth should be great. It's UAC football on ESPN. Back after these messages. Abilene Christian knotted up at 10. Zach Carlisle with Joseph Choppa, Koi Oslin, and our entire gang for United Athletic Conference football here on ESPN. Second down to start it for UIW. They're going to launch one to the end zone and a little wide of Caleb Chapman. And this drive that's been now four plays, 41 yards. UIW looking for their first lead of the game. Well, here we go, Zach. This is an opportunity for UIW to put ACU's defense on their heels, start out strong, get some more points on the board after that kind of slow and gritty and physical third quarter. It's going to be interesting what they draw up here, especially in this third down in nine scenario against the Wildcats defense. Yep, about a 42-yard field goal try from here, which is what Mason Lawler connected to to end the first half. Third down, ACU brings the house. A lob to the end zone, caught! It is Brandon Porter for the touchdown. UIW with their first lead of the game. 
a perfect floater. Porter goes and gets it. Cardinals in front. Well, Calzada's a quarterback where if he sees something he likes, he's going to keep attacking it. And there you go, your big-time playmaker and Brandon Porter winning the battle against Elijah Moffitt there off of that deep corner post route and getting the job done there, shifting the momentum to the Cardinals and kind of going back to their offensive philosophy of quick tempo, high energy points on the board. Extra point is good for Mason Lawler. It's a five play, 64 yard drive in a minute 24. The Cardinals have the lead. Porter, the go ahead TD. So Brandon Porter leads the Southlake Conference in yards per game receiving. He's averaged at 14 yards a catch and has a big 23-yard touchdown there to put UIW in front for the first time tonight, 17 to 10, and the kickoff out the back of the end zone for the touchback out to the 25-yard line. So Porter with the TD and the shift goes to the ACU offense here. And something I was thinking about during the break here, Joseph, UIW held force in the first and the third quarter. Both of those were scoreless quarters. ACU is plus 52 in the first and third quarter combined this season. UIW held them scoreless in both, and now they have the lead here in the fourth quarter. It just goes to show you, numbers never lie. Drive starts at the 25 for Abilene Christian, down for the first time tonight. McIver fakes, goes to the sideline. Tristan go lightly incomplete. Goes through his hands. Second down coming up. Let's check in down on the sideline with Coy Oslin. Yeah, Zach, Joseph, it's been a very slow offensive game for ACU. Junior quarterback Maverick McIver so far this season had been productive. He, had his, he was 10th in the country in passing yards amongst FCS quarterbacks and 7th in the nation in team passing efficiency. So UIW has done a good job of silencing this ACU offense. And here we are, 17-10 in the fourth quarter. McIver... One of the great athletes and everybody down in San Angelo raving about him coming out of high school. One of the great athletes in Central High history. Uh, went to Texas Tech, now comes to Abilene Christian in his second year with the Wildcats. Down seven here, throws behind Cooper McCaslin across the middle, it's incomplete and now third and 10. And we're early in the fourth quarter. You said tonight, Joseph, McIver's gonna have to make some throws. Here's the first one right here. And we are already here, Zach, at this point. It's going to be all eyes on number one, Maverick McIver, the signal caller for the Wildcats. Third and 10. Abilene Christian, three for 10 on third down tonight. Both teams off of blowout wins in week two. ACU at Prairie View A&M, 45 to 16. Incarnate Word 42 to 7 at Northern Colorado. Big clash here between former conference rivals. Adelaide Christian takes their first timeout, media timeout. Timeout ACU before a big third and 10. 20 seconds into the fourth. UIW in front. Big third down and 10 out of the timeout for Abilene Christian down seven here to start this fourth quarter. And Maverick McIver with a three man rush, time to throw it. Looking to the sideline, incomplete. A diving attempt nearly picked off. Jones was nowhere near it as he was on his sideline. And the UIW defense will get a quick three and out, and they'll get it back up seven. Yeah, McIver had to throw something there. Right? UIW did a great job and has done a great job at all night at keeping ACU's drive to a minimum when it comes to third down conversions. And now the play calling's got to be a little more aggressive for ACU. Yes, you want to play complementary football with the running game, but you got to trust McIver. McIver's got to get the job done. Nickel, a high punt, fair catch. Called and had for DeKalen Taylor. 
UIW ball after a 44 yard punt. Incarnate Word with the first lead of the game at 17 to 10 had a chance to add to it here. So we play here in the fourth quarter of this big non-conference matchup in week number three. UIW and ACU. Calzada to the air, first down, open down the sideline and caught. Still going, Brandon Porter shaking and baking his way to the 46 yard line and a pickup of 26. Now the connection between Calzada and Porter has been unlocked. This offense has been unlocked. Now they're going back to their tempo. It's been exciting for UAW. On the ground, trying to get about a yard or so is Jarrell Wiley. He's the one who scored the what would have been a crazy play touchdown, and it turned out to be a, a penalty on the Cardinals. But uh, so his touchdown not got negated. ACU gets Colby Workington off the field. He's down for a moment. Gain of two yards, second and eight. It's UIW into ACU territory, approaching 400 yards of offense tonight are the Cardinals. Clint Killo and this group of UIW Cardinals 22 games they've won each of the last two seasons combined. And that throw to the middle caught at the 25. Jalen Campbell in traffic. And let's tell why this system and this offense is working so well for a quarterback like Sal, uh, Calzada. And it's the philosophy of attacking your secondary in space. Calzada with time. He's going to take one to the end zone, and it's too far out the back. C.J. Hardy and Marquez Perez both potentially in the area. Outside, number 95, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. So a free play there. They're trying to take one to the end zone. They'll take the five free yards to make it first and five. And we asked Clint Killo, does it feel like UIW's on the map now, right? With what they've done each of the last two years, they made that first playoff appearance in 2018. He goes, I don't really think about that too much. You know, just try to be better day after day, and they, they string it together. Boy, it's been a lot of good days after yep. days here for the last few years for the Cardinals. First and five on the ground. It is Wiley, and he leapfrogs to the <laughs> near the first down marker. Showing off the athleticism. And they will move the chains first and 10. Well, you talked about UIW being on the map. And if you look at college football in San Antonio, it's elite. And there's a lot. But again, Coach Killo's philosophy, take it one day at a time and let your game talk. See what your product is out in the field. And like you said, Zach, it has been a lot of good days and seasons for this Cardinals football program. Just outside of the ball not bouncing their way, they were very close, a quarter away from the FCS National Championship game a year ago. And Calzada, he is going to keep the ball on the RPO, and he takes it to the two-yard line. Boy, Zach Calzada has used his legs wonderfully tonight. He kept, keeps it here. And a lot of these design run plays. It's interesting why ACU doesn't have some sort of guy to contain or a linebacker to spy on Calzada, but Calzada just mobilizing, taking advantage of his mobile ability as a quarterback, something he's not really known of, especially this past couple of seasons, but he's done a great job at doing something different and leading his team to red zone territories like right now. Hand it off up the middle, Met in the backfield, but then reaching with the second effort, and they'll mark him down at the one. Jarrell Wiley, well, it looked like there was he was going to lose a yard, and then that second effort nearly scored. And you're going to try and punch it in here if you're UIW and if you're ACU, it's it's the goal line packages. you got to pinch your defensive line. You've got to stack the box, but also be ready for Calzada to throw it one on one. Quick fades out into the pylon. Try and make a play here. If you're ACU, you don't want to go down two scores. Wiley the back. They got both tight ends on the right side of the formation as well. They'll give it to Wiley. Initially hit, trying to make another second effort, and he's met at the one. 
You see a defense trying to make a stop near the goal line. Great stop right here from the defensive front. Now setting up another key stop right here if they can get it done. If you're defensive coordinator, Skylar Cassidy, you got to be ready for that throw or even that design run that this UIW offense likes to surprise their Wildcats defense with. This is going to be a key third down here for both teams here tonight. I wonder if this is four down territory. Third and goal. Calzada's going to keep it, and he'll go in for the touchdown. Second rushing TD tonight for Zach Calzada. UIW up two possessions here in the fourth. Well, making plays with his arm, but also making plays with his legs. Two rushing touchdowns. Here tonight, Calzada, just an amazing all-around performance, making plays in the air and making plays on the ground. And that's why now ACU is looking for some answers here offensively. Mason Lawler for the extra point. Eight plays, 70 yards in four minutes and 20 seconds. A statement drive for UIW. A huge statement, and it was about time that they find their groove, give credit to the offensive line from UIW. Jaden Borjas has done a great job at blocking for those design runs from Zach Calzada. The offensive line, offensive line coaches will tell you they don't get enough credit for a lot of the points on the board, whether it's rushing touchdowns or passing touchdowns. The offensive line from UIW, kind of like ACU's offensive line, very elite at the FCS level. You're seeing why here tonight from guys like Stanley Marks and Jaden Borjas for UIW. Abilene Christian now will get it back down 14. A lot of work to do now for the Wildcats as Lawler will send it away. There's a flag down on the kickoff. It is returnable for Markel Jones. Got some room from the two. Out across the 30, and he's popped on the sideline. Big hit from Barry Dillon, but a flag was down. I think UIW was offside on the kickoff. Dillon made a huge hit. I wonder if they can add five on the kickoff for the offside to the end. And then there's a flag down on the other side at the 37 yard line too. We may have a couple of flags to sort out here. Looked like UIW was offside on the kickoff. We'll see if there's multiple infractions here. John Killermeyer, Kellermeyer, the uh, referee, talking to the ACU coaching staff. So there might be a couple of fouls on Incarnate word here. One for sure is offside, but there was yep. one on the far side of the field as well. Right at 10 minutes to go tonight. So a lot to sort out with the two penalties. What do you, which one do you accept? Where does it? Yeah. Do you have to re-kick? You know, what are all the? What are all the rules there? I guess it's <laughs> what we're waiting on. Here's a call from John Kellermeyer. There are fouls on the play by both teams. Offside. Kicking team during the return, personal foul, illegal blindside block, receiving team number 78. Those fouls offset, re-kick. So they will re-kick, okay. So there's the offside. Jones decides to take this out. And then an illegal block at some point on the return. So we'll do the kickoff again. But now the pressure shifts to Maverick McIver yeah. and this ACU offense down 14. Not that they can't run the ball. There's still 10 minutes to go, but they have to create some plays in the passing game now. You have to because you look at the time on the clock. You look at how Zach Calzada and the UIW offense is playing and the play 
calling offensively for the Wildcats hasn't been aggressive all night. Now, of course, the running game is working, but now it's time for McIver. Only 20 passing attempts on the night. Got an interception, but it's time for him to get going. You got to play quick. You got to put some points on the board. You trust your defense and then go back and do it again. Speaking of doing it again, the kickoff from Lawler, this time short, returnable from the seven. And some space, but right back at the 25. And so it's as if nothing happened and we had a touchback. <laughs> and ACU takes over the 25. Your thoughts on McIver now? He's played tonight. He's mentioned the 10 for 20. Just 74 yards passing. They've we really the tried to run the ball. And it's worked, but it's not giving them points tonight. Well, you go back to your aggressive style of play calling, something you haven't seen all night. Maybe McIver's not really familiar with that, but I think so far on the night, his decision making has a has been a little challenging because he's throwing balls in double coverage, trying to make it hard for him as a quarterback, but make it easy for itself. Trust your play caller, trust your offensive coordinator, trust your system to make those easy reads. First play incomplete. Go lightly and Taylor. The intended targets offense has been really stagnant for Abilene Christian. And it's a very aggressive defense from UIW. And just because they're up two scores does not mean that they take the foot off the gas pedal. It's that they put the foot on the gas pedal even more now to go up and increase their intensity and momentum here in this ball game against a Wildcat offense looking for answers here in the fourth quarter. See if they have to abandon the run game. They won't. They'll hand it off here. A good chunk for Sunday. He'll take it for about five to the 30. And still grab it onto the leg. The end play comes to an end. Third and five coming up, and without question, the biggest third down of this ball game for ACU. And you think about it from a schematic standpoint, running game has been great all night. But where's the play action game going? Because the one time you do throw a play action pass, you get that first down. But where has that been all night playing that complimentary football? Late blitz off the edge, throw to the outside, knocked away. Oh, and a flag comes in. It was broken up by Trey Richardson for the target of Jed Castles, and it's on UIW. It's going to be interference. What do you think? Well, there you go. You see the one-on-one -on -one right there trying to bat the ball, but you see that hit there. Pass interference, number 13, defense, spot foul, automatic, first down. I don't usually give a ton of opinions. That didn't look like interference to me, first glance. That, that looked like a fairly clean play by Richardson. What do, you, what do you think there, Joseph? Well, you know, you're just trying to think about it from the referee perspective, which is hard because, you know, they do an amazing job at looking at replays and making types of crucial calls like this. But you see it here, McIver trips right, recognizing that Jed Castle is going to try and get open against some sort of defensive back. McIver likes that one-on-one -on -one type of coverage with Castles. McIver throw over the middle, caught by McCaslin. He'll take it near the marker, and they will give it a first down. They'll give it right at the 45 and a first. And ACU's using tempo. Four-man rush here. McIver, he's going to go up top this time, and it's incomplete. And so second down and 10 coming up at the 848 mark of the fourth. But it was that out route to Castles. It was called for interference, and it's a spot foul in that situation. Not necessarily a big yardage difference, but the automatic first down with the interference. And so Abilene Christian second and 10 on their own 45. McIver. Over the middle, incomplete for Taylor. Looked like it might have been a little behind, but I thought Taylor had a chance at that one. It's been a rough night with McIver with these mistakes. Right here, you see clean pocket, but right there, kind of in his hands. But again, could have had better ball placement, but it's one of those 50-50 things that you look at after the game in the film room and say, how could we have done this better? It's going to be a key throw down here for ACU. Yeah, just recycled the biggest third down of the game, yeah. right? Each time it comes up for Abilene Christian. Third and 10. 
Just three on the rush. McIver fading away, looking deep down the field. It's caught. It's Tylen Williams. He stays on his feet, and he is down at the one. 54 yards to Williams. Sets up first and goal, and here comes Abilene Christian. Trying to go quickly. First and goal, they'll hand it off. JV on Sunday in for the touchdown, and the Wildcats are back in it. We talk about opportunities for McIver to make big throws. But we got a flag. Declined and a touchdown. ACU back within one possession. It was about time for McIver to make a big throw, rushing out of the pocket, seeing a man downfield wide open, then goes tempo, matches what UIW does. We see it here out of the three, five step drop. McIver rolling out right, seeing a man down the field, and he gets it there, and then tempo, touchdown for the Wildcats. Kyle Ramsey for the extra point. We've got a flag on the PAT. With contact, half the distance to the goal, retry. Half the distance, they'll redo the PAT. That is a massive drive when Abilene Christian needed it most. And McIver, again, Zach, we called on him to make a big throw for a big game like this, and he did it. And now you got to do it again, but now the pressure's on defense, on the defensive side of the ball to get a stop here. Still plenty of time to go with eight and a half minutes. Ramsey for the extra point. Oh, it's a high snap and getting it down. Well done, Nickel, the holder. And it caps off a seven play, 75 yard drive in a minute and a half. Williams, the big one. Sunday, the TD. We got a seven point game. Well, game on, Joseph. I mean, yeah. ACU with a massive drive to get back within seven. With eight and a half to go, we got a long way to go tonight. This could be right on down to the wire. And this is exactly what we were talking about pregame and in the beginning of the first half is going to come down to the wire, playoff implications. You, if you're ACU, you want to boost your resume. And again, for ACU, you call him number one, and he answered. Returnable for DeKalen Taylor from the goal line. Straight up the middle, stays on his feet and takes it out across the 30. And that's where the drive will begin. The touchdown was JV on Sunday, but the big play was Tylen Williams for ACU. Well, we see here McIver with his reads, rolling out right to the pocket and just seen right down the middle Go lightly, just wide open, trying to stay in bounds, but again, just staying on his feet, but then quick tempo setting up the Wildcats for that touchdown from Sunday. And again, Zach, it was about time for that big game throw from McIver, getting the job done there. Just a beautiful play calling on that drive from ACU and McIver complementing that style of football. Drive starts at the 34 for UIW. Up by seven here in the fourth. They will reverse it. It's Jalen Campbell, and he takes a hit, stays on his feet. Still going to the 50. Oh, that was wild from the start. Campbell took a shot, keeps the play alive, and picks up 16. Coach Killo is a very creative football mind. We haven't seen this all night so far, and it's been surprising the ACU defense. This ACU defense has to be ready for whatever comes out of that backfield for the Cardinals. One play into Abilene Christian territory for Incarnate Word. Over 440 yards of offense tonight. On the ground, left side, big hole, big gainer. Inside the 35, Timothy Carter. The first year Cardinal out of Garland, Texas. Rips off 17 and a first. Well, tempo here again for the Cardinals trying to tire down this Wildcats defense. 
Off the fake now. Calzada, time, middle, caught, 15 yard line. Stacked up right there is Campbell. No time, blink of an eye, here comes UIW. They're riding the momentum they've had and they're matching it with their quick tempo. Zach Calzada, again, this is why he's a very talented quarterback in the college football world. Calzada, all day. Now time runs out. Trying to pull a rabbit out of his hat again. It's incomplete and nearly picked by Plumley in the corner of the end zone. Calzada, is, I mean, he's just doing his Mahomes impression out there, <laughs> running around, making plays. He's been incredible tonight. Well, it's great pressure from ACU. Again, loading the box a little bit, trying to give Calzada some different looks, but it's so hard to game plan for a guy who's just super, super talented. Almost got away with one there, though. Plumley nearly picked it off on the side of the end zone. Up by seven, near in field goal range of the Cardinals. 6.44 left on the ground. It is Carter. Stays on his feet, and these Cardinals have been hard to tackle on this drive, and he's battling his way for five hard yards to the nine. Kenton will hoyt in on that play. Darius Moore, the linebacker, as well. Massive third down here. Yeah, if you're ACU's defense, this is what you prepare for. This is what you've been practicing for all week long. You know it's going to be gritty. It's going to be physical. It's going to come down in plays like this. Can you stop Calzada? Can you match up against this great offensive line for the Cardinals? Let's see right here in third and five. They're going to hand it, and, and Carter stumbles right at the line of scrimmage. And so a field goal drive will come on for UIW. They had a hole too. Just an unfortunate mishap right there. If you're an Incarnate Word fan, but again, now it's ACU's defense in the special teams is known to make some plays here. I think Coach Cassidy is looking for that to happen. 27 yard field goal for Mason Lawler to go up two scores. It's a big one. Good snap, good hold. It is good, and Incarnate Word pushes the lead to 10 at 27 to 17. And a remember of note as well is that first drive of the game for Abilene Christian. And so remember that first drive, Joseph, for Abilene Christian, they go for it on fourth down. They took the three points off the board. After making a field goal, they accept the penalty yeah. and decide to go for it on fourth and goal, trying to get a touchdown. They come up empty. Those three points loom large right now at this moment in the game. We've come a long way. And even though it was a slow start, now we're picking up the energy. And like you said, Zach, these are little things that no matter what happens, you look back as early as that nine minute and second drive, first drive of the game, and you look back and say, how could we have done this differently against a powerhouse opponent like Incarnate Word? And I think those are some questions that Coach Patterson and staff are gonna have. Kick off into the end zone returnable. And Jones is coming out with it, and he won't make the 20. Bad decision there. Down at the 17-yard line. So ACU down 10 with the ball as we peek behind the curtain inside the ACU TV or studio. Having fun back there running the show. <laughs> Hutton Harris and the gang. They do a terrific job for us all season long. Our second of five football games. This year, Abilene Christian will be back home for homecoming in October, just the one home game in the month of September. And boy, does it get tough for ACU. We'll talk about that in just a second. As they have it down by 10. Here off the fake, it is McIver, and he will float one, and it's incomplete going down the sideline. 
for Cooper McCaslin. It might have been a little short-armed. That looked like it had a chance there, but incomplete. If you're McIver, you're going to have to make some big throws again. You're looking at the clock, looking at the score, looking at playing situational football on your play sheet. Go to your four-minute offense. See what McIver can do here and maybe involve Jeremiah Dobbins in the passing game a little bit. Hasn't been really involved in the passing game as a running back, but we'll see what the play calling is here. Second and ten. All throwing a figure for ACU now. McIver taking a shot again. McCaslin in stride. What a throw. They will mark him down at the 42-yard line. Best throw for McIver, 42 yards. Now in tempo, trusting guys like McCaslin to make some plays. And now McIver, four on the rush. He's going to throw to the side like Castles. He caught it. Was he out of bounds before he caught it? No, he must have come back in in time. So he'll pick up seven. And second down coming. ACU's got to go quickly. There's the big completion of McCaslin. Just excellent ball placement right there. And McCaslin, this is what he's worked hard for all season long, making big catches like that. Second and three. Oh, a little trickery back to McIver. He is looking down the sideline, incomplete for Jones. Kind of the snap, and then they flip it back to the QB. And incomplete, looking for Jones. Well, trying to be a little creative here. You want to score early in this four minute offensive type of situational football. And that way you can come back and try and tie the game. But McIver, big third and three here in the fourth quarter. It's a couple of times they've snapped it to number 14, Hutt Graham, one of the third string quarterbacks. McIver to the outside, caught. Noah Caldwell along the sideline, knocked out of bounds by Tylen Foster. to the 32. And then did they throw a flag down on top of that? Mm -hmm. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That takes it to the 17 yard line, four minutes to go. Yep, there's that late hit on the boundary. So down 10, Abilene Christian in the red zone. They need a quick score, the time is running here, Joseph. Yeah, McIver, his cadence has got to be a little bit quicker, but this is again, this is what you prepare for, this four minute type of offensive scenario. Seventh play of the drive, Williams in motion. Four on the rush, McIver, he's hit, balls out. And ACU jumps on it with Germay and getting home Stephen Parker, the stud all-conference defensive end. And who would have guessed that Stephen Parker leading that defensive front would have made a play against one of the elite offensive lines here at the FCS football level. Stephen Parker getting the job done defensively, creating energy and causing havoc for Maverick McIver. Loss of 10 at second and 20. ACU's in field goal range. Three man rush, McIver. He's looking deep. He wants the end zone, and it is incomplete. Looking for Williams and good coverage from Trey Richardson, who had the interception earlier in the night. And I like that post route down the middle because that's where McIver excels out most, throwing down the middle of the field, but just couldn't get it there right on the money to Tylen Williams. So from here, Joseph, you're thinking. About a 45-yard try for Ramsey, and they need the field goal at some point if they want to tie this thing up. But you figure, do you take a shot here, or do you just settle for the three, and then you have to get the touchdown anyway? 2:51, ACU needs another possession at some point, no matter what. McCaslin in motion. McIver looking down the sideline and going up for it, go lightly, incomplete. 
And so fourth and 20. And a no brainer, they need the field goal here. Yeah, and let's tell why they decided to call this crucial third down. It's because you have the insurance. It's because you have a guy like Kyle Ramsey who's had an amazing season all along. That way you can get the field goal here. You trust your defense to match the intensity, match the momentum that the UIW offense is going to bring here tonight, and then you give it back to your offense and go to that two-minute drive with Maverick McIver. D.G. Paul in coverage on that play. This is a 44-yard field goal for Kyle Ramsey. The kick is on the way. And quickly a fan favorite is Kyle Ramsey. Perfect on the young season so far. It goes back to a seven-point game at 27 to 20. And with 2.45, Abilene Christian just the two timeouts. So you figure kick deep, try to get off the field to try to get the ball back one more time. And we talk about styles for UIW. It's that high energy, put points on the board. It's offense, ACU, physical and defense. Now it comes down to the wire. 2.45 to go tonight. Abilene Christian, 2-0. At UIW, but then look at the gauntlet coming up at Central Arkansas, at North Texas, homecoming for North Alabama, at SFA and at Southern Utah, four of the next five on the road for ACU. It's going to be very interesting for the Wildcats how they game plan around this, especially before and after that homecoming game here at Wildcat Stadium is a really challenging and tough schedule here for ACU. UIW, they're going to go home for their home opener <laughs> next week. The first three on the road, North American and then Southeastern Louisiana. That'll be a fun one in the Southland Conference and then Texas A&M Commerce. So they get to go home for the next three, which will be huge and always a tough Southland Conference that UIW will deal with. They were preseason number two in the Southland this year. Crazy to think that it'll be late September to get their home opener next week. <laughs> yeah, it's a very opposite schedule between both of these two programs out here tonight. It's interesting how these coaches kind of manage the schedules, but they've done an excellent job at that so far this season. Onside kick try instead, and it's recovered by UIW's Jalen Campbell. So ACU with just the two timeouts decides to do the onside try and they do not get it recovered by UIW. Well, and there you go. It's a classic onside kick. The conversion percentage is low statistically across all of college football. And now all eyes for the Wildcats defense to make a play, get a stop here. But for UIW, Zach Calzada has been in rhythm, been in his bag all second half long. We'll see if that's any different here tonight, or here right now and late in this fourth quarter. So UIW takes over at the ACU 46, and really the same scenario holds. ACU will try to use a couple of timeouts to try to get the ball back and preserve as much time as possible with 244. First drive, we have Five yard penalty, first down. First down. Moves it back to their own side of the 50. So first and 15. So ACU, they'll try to use both of their timeouts here defensively. Yeah, this is, again, situational football on the defensive side here tonight. The front seven new for the Wildcats, but the secondary is leading this veteran type of defense with Coach Cassidy in the second year. Handoff left side to Trey Siggers. He's got some space, and Isaiah Kelly's going to track him down, and he still is on his feet. They mark him down at the 42, and the clock will keep running, and second down coming up. On first and 15, a pickup of nine, and second down on the way, and ACU will elect to hold on their, to those two timeouts until second down. And UIW has had a great night all game so far throwing the football, but because you have those 344 passing yards, you're going to complement that with the running attack with 145 yards. So a really good balanced effort from Coach Clint Killow's Cardinals team. The next line of great UIW coaches, Eric Morris, G.J. Kinney, and 
Now Clint Killo, and it'll be a couple more yards to the 40, and Abilene Christian will call their second timeout with 1.45 to go. And so now the game comes down to this play, a UIW first down, and they'll walk away with a win. And it's going to be interesting here for the rest of the game, how they manage the clock and situational football. And this defensive front for ACU on this key third and four here and how UIW kind of draws it up. Let me pick your brain partner here. Oh, so third okay. and four. Yeah. You throw it and try to get a first. You complete it and you do it, game over. Or you run it, and if you don't get it, force ACU to call that last time out, punt it away, play defense. I'm curious. Well, UIW, they live <laughs> by throwing the football, yeah. don't they? I yeah especially when you have a guy like Zach Calzada who's had a great game all night. But I'll give you this, Zach. I think you look at not Zach Calzada throwing it, but surprise ACU again with a run because it's worked all His night long. His legs have been huge tonight yep. with a couple of rushing touchdowns and running around making plays to throw the ball as well. I wonder if they'll put it in one's hands. A lot of opportunities, a lot of things to choose from. It's a good problem to have if you're on the UIW coaching staff. It all comes down right here. Ball game on the line right here, third and four. First down wins it for UIW in theory. They'll hand it off, Siggers, and he will be tackled right at the line of scrimmage, and ACU will call their final timeout, and they will get the ball back, and we're not done yet. <laughs> Staying on the ground attack for UIW again. Shows you they're trusting their defense, and we'll see what happens here. Uh, now I'm curious if did you run it on third down to go for it on fourth down. This, uh, who knows in <laughs> college football in 2023, fourth and three at the 39, up seven. I mean, do you go for this here? Well, you know ACU's gonna stack the box in their front four. Right, and then you look at number one, Zach Calzada. You can run a little spacing concept, throw it out to the flats or to the sticks, or like we said, Zach, I mean, you can use his legs. You can kind of run an RPO type of play. You can run a read option, worked out earlier, or you can just do the classic Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts. Quarterback <laughs> draw, quarterback power. Surprise the Wildcats defense here. Very exciting for the fans watching here tonight and in the state. And three. If they don't get it, it'll be great field position for Abilene Christian. Fourth and three. UIW to the air. Calzada throws, caught, first down, and a lot more. Still on his feet, breaking tackles. Brandon Porter ends the game in style for UIW. They put it in Calzada's hands and the Cardinals deliver the dagger. Yeah, you trust the guy who has put you in winning positions all night long, and they ran it there. It's a sticks concept. Throw it out to your slot receiver, running that nice little zig route to uh, the boundary. Brandon Porter getting the job done there. I mean, he's had a night really getting connected with his quarterback. Big time throw, and now the victory formation for Incarnate Word as they will go on the road, a big fourth down conversion. And Incarnate Word with a 27 to 20 lead and a couple of knees away from winning on the road. That is a gutsy performance in a game that was 10 to 10 going to the fourth, a 17 point fourth quarter. And Calzada will take a knee. And UIW on the road with a good win at Abilene Christian tonight. And the Cardinals will go to two and one. That's a great win for UIW. Our next broadcast will be October the 14th, the 3 o'clock kickoff. Abilene Christian and North Alabama right here on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app. But a big time win for UIW, 27 to 20, the final over Abilene Christian tonight, ninth ranked 
Incarnate Word goes to two and one on the season with a big time road win and championship teams that have been there and done that before. So we welcome you upstairs, Zach and Joseph, to wrap this thing up tonight. UIW has been there and done that before, deep playoff runs. The fourth quarter did not phase these Cardinals tonight. The Cardinals, they just have playmakers. You can see why now Zach Calzada is on that short list, a list of quarterbacks who's beaten the University of Alabama. Brandon Porter, the defense led by Stephen Parker. Just a great balance effort from UIW. Tremendous game. Well done by everybody. This was so much fun to watch. It's been a presentation of the UAC on ESPN. Zach Joseph, Coy, Hutton, and the gang. Thanks so long. Take care. Good night from Abilene, Texas. More information for the purchase tickets, visit ecsports.com.